Hey everyone, it's Dr. Tracy, and we are looking at dramatic elements this week. So if you click on the dramatic elements link, it will take you here. And there is some stuff going on with reading. You need to read chapter four. There are also three different articles to read. Discussion 4A, which is dramatic elements. And then there's a section about finding the premise giving you a couple articles on that and discussion 4b is finding the premise for a game uh, so let's start with chapter four and this is chapter four um, working with dramatic elements and so let's uh, talk about what are dramatic elements Uh, the different things within your game that give your game that sense of play, that which makes it interesting, beyond just the formal elements which define that it is a game. Challenge is one of the dramatic elements because challenge creates a game that is sufficiently difficult yet satisfying. It can't be too challenging and it can't be too easy. Games that are too easy, you don't play too often. Things, games that are too hard, you quit because you can't get through it. Challenge should be created as individualized and dynamic, meaning that uh, you should be able to test by the player how challenging to make it in a perfect game. Flow is the term that happens when there are activities that are goal-directed and bounded by the rules, but being involved in those activities, you become completely absorbed you have a hyper concentration level and time doesn't seem to pass in the same way that it would otherwise. If you've ever played a game and then just looked up at the clock and say, wow, I can't believe two hours has gone by, then that's flow and you've experienced it. And that's the goal is to create a game that causes the players to feel those feelings of flow. Play in itself is built of a lot of different ways to be defined. We saw that when we tried to define what is play and what is a game. But basically, you can think of play as freedom to act within the rules, freedom to move about within a structure. The structure is established by the formal elements. If you look in your text, you'll see there are examples of competitive play, chance-based play, make-believe play, vertigo play, free-form play, rule-based play, but all are still considered play. There is several types of players. When they agree to be a part of a game by adhering to the rules and procedures according to meet the, meet the objective or goal, some types of players are motivated to play according to the type of game that they're playing. The competitor, for example, the competitor plays a game because they like to win. And it doesn't matter what the game is, a competitor is going to want to find that advantage to be the winner. The explorer is someone who plays a game because they like seeing new worlds or going to all areas of a certain thing until it's all completed. The collector is a player who likes to play a game because they want to get the achievements or collect one of each type of something. <clears throat> the achiever is the one that wants to have a skill that they can improve on. The joker wants to play because they like to laugh or make light of things. The artist likes to create. The director likes to set up their own game or storyline. The storyteller likes to be immersed or make an experience immersive for others. The performer likes to show off what talents they have, and the craftsman likes to build stuff. Okay, so that doesn't mean that you are just one type of player or another. You can be several, um, several of these, with one is predominant. But when you are creating your game, you want to insert dramatic elements that speak to all of the type of players that you can so that everybody finds enjoyment out of your game if that's what it is that makes them enjoy playing the premise and part of the big uh one well, the big the discussion this week for b is to find a premise 
The premise is a statement that's just going to establish the action of game within a setting or a metaphor. It makes what are the formal elements within the system, how are they playable, and how are they joined to the dramatic elements of story and character. So the idea of finding a premise is to heighten the experience of players by creating a, a joint effort between what is the game, how is the game defined, and what makes it fun. Some of the dramatic elements that you'll discuss in the development of your story are character, those agents through whose actions a drama is told. And these, um, by being able to identify with the character, it will increase the immersive experience of the game and thereby taking a bridge between the formal elements that define what the game is and giving him a name and a face to make it personal. When defining a character, ask yourself, what does the character want, need, and so forth, and try to find a function of the character as a representative of the player. Story is another dramatic element. The outcome of a story must be uncertain. And since you don't just read to a player playing a game, the ability to integrate storyline into your game becomes a tricky way of establishing clues, hints, cutscenes, foretelling, and there's lots of methods for putting in a story to your game to let a potential story emerge rather than have it fed to you. There's some exercises in the textbook that can help you walk through the creation of storyline. The myths of interactive storytelling. There's an article in the textbook about to read that. I did have this as another discussion, but then we would have had three. And I thought that might be too much for this week. But this is something to think about how you can interactively integrate storytelling into gameplay. While the integration of story structure itself is a difficult problem for games and interactive media, there is an aspect of story creation that is a natural complement to game design. Games lend themselves to storytelling in the sense that we want to have a story to accompany the adventure that we're undertaking. But they also lend themselves to low attention spans and difficult to get players to do backstory reading and so forth. So while games should have stories, the story needs to be somehow accessible and easy to, um, to attain. We do that through the use of different worlds and cultures that have familiarity or establishing languages, either new or made up or existing ones, government, ec um, ec economy, politics. Stories have dramatic arcs. And those dramatic arcs mean that there is some conflict. The conflict is can be within or against another character, against some force of nature, against self, against an entire society, or against the inevitable of fate. The dramatic arc defines a story that starts and builds and builds and builds until it comes to a conclusion. The climax is where it's at its worst, and then it de-escalates it, as it gets better. I'm, we're not going to do that exercise, so I'll stop there. So um, you can think about plotting a story for your game by choosing a game that you have played all the way through and think about how it has a dramatic arc in that story. Now, if you were creating your game, what would be the dramatic story that you're telling? We are going to be building our own game. The next thing that happens within this class, the next major project, is next week, but I'll just give you a preview. Once we get through system dynamics, you're going to be assigned another project. And that project is going to be um I don't have it posted. Okay, well that project is going to be to create your um a, a game idea by describing entirely what the structure of the game will be, 
the formal elements, the dramatic elements, and how they work together in the system. And then you'll make a quick pitch, a five minute video describing your game idea and get feedback from the other um, people in this class. So as you go through this dramatic elements section and do some of this reading, think about a game you might want to make and think about what is the premise and what you can do to integrate a story.